I'm Josh with the Centers for Academic Success, here to bring you part one of an eight-part series on essential skills to master for your English course. If you have any questions on what we're going over today, visit the Centers at any of the main campuses. Trust me, they'll do a better job at this than I will. So today, let's talk about something really fun. Your syllabus. Oh, sorry, the fun stuff comes later, but believe it or not, this stuff is really important. But wait, oh, an assignment. <laughs> You'll have plenty of these, don't worry. You'll get one, be patient. And with an assignment, we also have a rubric. Endless fun. Okay, why am I pulling all these things out? Well, first, because my script was written to tell me to. <laughs> but more importantly, as a student, it is essential that you read and understand these things. All of these things will appear in some form throughout your college career in every class you take. So let's take a look at this big old monster first. The syllabus. You've probably heard this before and you're likely to hear it again. The syllabus is key to success in your class. Think of it as a map to navigate the course throughout the semester. You'll probably have lots of classes and syllabi for each of them. They'll be different in many ways, but the most common elements will be instructor contact information at office hours, attendance and late work policies, required and suggested textbooks, assignment due dates, learning outcomes, and other campus resources that can help you navigate college life. Now, those learning outcomes, what are they? Well, of course, they're what you're gonna learn in the class, but specifically, they're going to be described differently in each discipline. Learning outcomes include the knowledge, skills, and abilities that you are to achieve by the end of the course. Now, here's a little secret. They are just as important, if not more important, than the grade. Here are some examples of syllabus learning outcomes for English classes. In a composition class, you might find that you have to identify the rhetorical situation, read and analyze academic sources, compose thesis-driven essays, employ appropriate documentation to support research-based essays, and follow the conventions of MLA documentation. In a literature class, your objectives might involve reading fiction and writing analytically about the texts you read, understand literary principles, and thinking critically to support a thesis. That's a big one there, thinking critically, which isn't exclusive only to literature classes. These learning objectives provide a frame of reference for your studying. Ask yourself, how does all this studying fit into the objectives for the course? And why is it important? Okay, we did it. We've dissected this great syllabus beast and inside its shell, we should find an assignment. These are pretty self-explanatory, or so we think. The trick is to understand them thoroughly before you begin. And the best way to start, before you start, is to ask the instructor for clarity. After you read the assignment and get a clear understanding of what you will need to do, ask yourself the following. What is the purpose of this assignment? Consider what you are actively doing. Are you constructing an argument? Are you analyzing a poem? Or are you giving objective information? Who is my audience? Think about who else might read the assignment, aside from your instructor. What resources do I need to begin? You might have to read a literary passage or scientific studies. Also consider if research is required for your project. Who can help me if I have a question? Beyond your instructor, there are plenty of resources like drop-in tutoring and writing labs at the Centers for Academic Success. We're almost finished here. I hope I haven't lost anyone. Now, the final part to these shenanigans is the grading rubric. Simply put, it's what your instructor will reference when they grade your assignment. The rubric shows you what your professor finds most important for that assignment. For example, here, formatting is worth five points, and here, organization is worth most of the points. Rubrics will vary in how your instructor prioritizes points. Be sure to check the rubric as it gives clues into your instructor's expectations and where you can focus your efforts. You'll want to know the two types of rubrics, analytic and holistic. Simply put, analytic rubrics tend to identify and assess the components of a finished product, and holistic rubrics assess the finished product as a whole. So, 
why did we spend all this time trying to figure this stuff out about rubrics? <laughs> well, it's really going to help you in the end. The rubric gives you a clear idea of what to expect for your grade on the corresponding assignment. It helps you focus your efforts, and ultimately, it helps with your learning. Now, before you go, let's take a step back and think about the key concepts you should be taking away from this video. Here's Robin Rohde with some ideas you should remember. Hello, my name is Robin Rohde and I've taught English here at the College of Southern Nevada since 2010. I'm here today to give you my top three tips for how to leverage your course materials. Tip number one is to be a time traveler. Take some time throughout the semester to not only look ahead in your course syllabus, but also look behind at everything you've accomplished. Doing this should create some continuity between where you've been and where you're going. Tip two is to hunt for clues. Change the way that you see everything your teacher has provided you from something that is a requirement to do for one assignment to a whole slew of resources that you can use not only in that class, but also in classes to come. And finally, tip three, don't wait for meaning, make it. Change your course assignments into something that's meaningful to you by finding at least one way that doing that assignment will help you personally, academically, or professionally. A lot of times our assignments help us practice skills that will be useful to us for years to come. I hope you have a wonderful academic writing experience here at the College of Southern Nevada. Remember, you can drop in at any of the centers for academic success if this information has left you with any questions. Well, till next time.